When Kid Rock teamed up with Sheryl Crow for his song Collide last year, he was showing just one of his many talents. This morning, he talks with our Tracy Smith for the record. Yeah! The guy who said you can't be all things to all people likely never met Kid Rock. is a mix of styles, urban rap, rock and roll, country and western. My name is Kim! And it pays to be a musical chameleon. Kid Rock has sold 27 million albums worldwide and filled arenas from coast to coast with a show that is equal parts music and mayhem. Say hey, hey, hey. Playing a concert for two hours is pie. You know, I've, I would do that every hour of the day if I could. Love to perform. <clears throat> the 22 hours in between the next show is what kills you. Away from the stage, the party god is something of a perfectionist. It's too early to be drinking beer for me right now, so I grab the hot sauce. You know, just... He's a self-taught musician who can play every instrument in his backup band. Kid Rock lives large, with his own recording studio on a sprawling estate north of Detroit and a Mount Vernon-style mansion close to downtown. So when people hear Kid Rock, what do you hope that they think? It doesn't matter. Come on, it matters. The people that don't like me, they can go on this internet and find enough stuff to make them hate me. The people that love me, they can go on there and find enough stuff to, to fall in love with me and be like, wow, what a great guy. At the end of the day, I'm all that, so I'm just doing me. Motor City's bad boy is actually from the suburbs. Kid Rock was born Robert Ritchie in middle-class Romeo, Michigan, the son of a car dealer. Early on, young Bobby knew his future was in music. I was going to be successful at it. I didn't realize it was going to be this successful, but I thought that I would hit a lick somewhere. That somewhere turned out to be one of the rougher sections of Detroit. Bobby Ritchie left home and moved here as a teen to pursue his love of rap. His parents were not amused. At the same time, they didn't disown you. I think one of, the, one of the funniest times in the world is like I'm in like the hood in Mount Clemens and I'm kind of I'm selling some drugs to make some money to buy records and working at a car wash. And I'm st standing with my buddies on like one of the porches on my black friends. It's like my dad came by and like picked me up for an orthodontist appointment. <laughs> <laughs> What'd that do for your street cred? It's nothing. Still, he kept at it. Bobby Ritchie became known as that white kid who rocks and took the words kid and rock as his stage name. After a decade in the Detroit rap music trenches, he put out 1998's Devil Without a Cause. The kid was suddenly hot. His outlaw image attracted legions of adoring fans, and one in particular, actress Pamela Anderson. The couple married in 2006 and split four months later. Did you think it was a forever thing? I thought it could be, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I wouldn't have gone in like that if I didn't. And the sting of the breakup changed Richie's view of relationships. You think? Yeah, you touch hot stove, you get burnt, don't touch it anymore. So that was basically it? What do you, what do you mean? I didn't touch the stove. I like put both hands on it and held them there for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> So does that mean... I don't even go near the stove anymore. Does that mean you won't get married again? Oh, I, don't, I don't know what it means at all. It probably means I'm not going to be screwing around looking for love in Hollywood ever. It's, it's a great statue to do the YMCA next to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> These days, he keeps his love life private and his vices in check. Almost. The ever-present cigar. Yeah, it's a problem. Is it? Yeah. How many cigars a day do you go through? Well, these are small. Five, six, if we're having a good time, ten. Have you tried to quit? No. Want to quit? No, I quit smoking and I figured, you know, that's terrible for my lungs and for my voice. I don't inhale these. You still get the nicotine through your blood vessels and your cheeks. And at the end of the day, I thought, you know what? It's pretty hard to replace a lung. I can buy a new lip. <laughs> so I'm happy to introduce a, a son of Detroit, a friend, Kid Rock. 
Richie has never been shy about speaking out for what's closest to his heart. His song, Born Free, became the unofficial campaign anthem for Mitt Romney. And on his critically acclaimed new album, Rebel Soul, his hometown pride is front and center. This is halftime of the Detroit Lions game on Thanksgiving Day. You can probably guess this song's title. Detroit, Michigan. Are you gonna put your seatbelt on? Oh, well, we're not going far. Driving around the city in his former police cruiser, you get the impression that he takes Detroit's revitalization personally and that each new building is a victory. Well, there's a lot of work to be done, but there is work being done. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take some time, but the fact that people are coming together and trying to get this back to what it once was, a great viable city, is, that's what I like to see. And he does more than just talk about it. This concert last spring was a benefit for the Detroit Symphony only one of many charities he's raised money and written checks for. Kid Rock is a high-minded civic benefactor in a lowbrow disguise. For those of you with the tuxedos and suits, thank you. For those of you without, rock on. How much money did you give away last year? You have no idea. <laughs> Just give me a ballpark. I don't know. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you can Google it or something and get to... <laughs> I think it's close to a million dollars. Probably. How lucky am I to be able to do that? But Bob Ritchie is proudest of being a dad. He was still a struggling rapper when he and his former girlfriend had a son, Robert Ritchie Jr. Kid Rock fought for and got full custody. A lot of guys would have run away from that responsibility of being a single dad. Why didn't you? That didn't even seem like an option. No? Just, who would do that? You just knew from the moment that he was born that I'm gonna take him and I'm gonna take care of him? It might have something to do with my upbringing, you know? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you know, just, uh, it just seemed like the right thing to do. The younger Richie, now a college student, didn't adapt well to school in California during his dad's oh, brief marriage to Pamela guy. Anderson. I picked him up the first day and he got in the car and he was kind of choked up. And, I say, what's wrong, buddy? He was like, so man, all these kids do here is ride skateboards and do drugs. I was like, hey, 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 hey. I was like, hey, stay off them skateboards. <laughs> Just a joke, maybe. But behind the juvenile humor, Kid Rock is a man who knows just how lucky he is. Sometimes I hear that song and I'll start to sing along. And think, man, I'd love to see that girl again. I think anybody that's worked hard and has built something and has been successful can testify to how wonderful that was, how wonderful it still is. You still are grateful for it. Still grateful for it and, you know, would never sit here in front of a camera and bitch about, you know, how tough my life is at some levels that maybe people can't understand. When that starts happening, I just stay home and drink an expensive bottle of wine and be like, you know what? Everything's all right. You're doing pretty well. Be thankful. Singing my sweet 